Only three miles long and half a mile wide, Lundy Island lies in the Bristol Channel, 12 miles off the North Devon coast. Its steep granite cliffs erupt dramatically out of the sea and extend below the surface to form submarine reefs. Lundy is the most protected marine site in England under both European and English law. In 2010, it was converted into England's first marine conservation zone, becoming part of a network of marine protected areas around our coasts. Lundy is the model for all our marine conservation zones. But why is it so special? It's the island's shape and position that makes it so unique. It's a place of contrasts and variety, offering many different conditions for species to live in. Lundy also receives warm currents from the Gulf Stream, allowing species usually found around the coasts of southern Europe to thrive in its clear waters. It's a hot spot for marine life, with a large number of species coexisting within a very small area. Some of the animals and habitats around Lundy receive special protection, either because they're rare and under threat, or because they support a large number of other species. The reefs extend out to sea for over one kilometre in some places, and provide a solid platform, like real estate, for species to attach themselves to. Space is at a premium, but this makes for a spectacular display, like an underwater garden, colourful anemones, sunset cup corals, pink sea fans and sponges sway in the currents. Crevices and boulders make hiding places for eels, lobsters and crabs and sea caves are carved out of the cliffs, offering shelter to grey seals. In the shallower waters, lush kelp forests flourish during the spring and summer months. The rich sources of food attract fish, like the brightly coloured cuckoo wrasse. The sandbanks and sediments beyond the reefs look like deserts at first sight, but they're home to a variety of species, often well disguised, from shellfish to the burrowing anemone and the strange red bandfish. The European spiny lobster also receives special protection within the site and the no-take zone on the eastern side of the island will help its numbers to recover. A ban on fishing in no-take zones like these may actually help the future of the fishing industry it's already helping the common lobster fishery around Lundy. I work with Chris and Kirk and I work 190 days a year at sea. We catch crabs and lobsters in the summer months. Yeah, our first pots are outside the harbour on the first bit of rough ground. And then we work bits and pieces of rough ground all the way to Lundy. It's always good for lobster and crab there. As you can't shoot pots willy-nilly around the island. Uh, the east side of the island is a no-take zone, which we have to keep well clear of. This has been the only no-take zone for many, many years, which allowed that opportunity to start looking at the benefits of closing an area to fishing. And so, you know, the, the research that's gone on, that showed uh, the abundance within the no-take zone, the increased population of lobsters, um, and the, the potential for spillover. It's been fantastic ever since. I mean, there's definitely an overspill from it. As far as I know, all the fishermen that work here are all really happy with it. I mean, it's, it's full of buried lobsters, so nobody can get at them. They're all spawning away and, it's, you know, hopefully helping the rest of the island. Maintaining productive, healthy seas around our coasts is in all our interests. They have their own intrinsic value, but they also help regulate our climate, provide health benefits through recreation and economic benefits through tourism and fishing. We need to ensure we don't damage these special places or use up their precious resources so that they are still around for future generations to benefit from and enjoy. Lundy was the first step and it's already showing us the way.